Welcome to Math with Professor V. This is video lecture for section R.4 for business calculus on equations. And this is just the briefest little overview of different techniques for solving various kinds of equations. If you need more in-depth lectures with more examples, then I'll link additional videos and resources in the description box for you. All right, so the first kind of equation that we're going to go over solving are linear equations, meaning the exponent or the power on the variable is to the first and nothing else. And your goal is to isolate the variable, get it all by itself on one side of the equation. So here's first example to get us warmed up. 5x plus 2 equals 8 minus 3x. It's up to you if you want to get the variable isolated on the left side or the right side of the equation. Most of the time we put it on the left. So on that note, I'm going to try to get all the terms with x on the left side. That negative 3x needs to move, so I'm going to add the opposite. I'm going to add 3x to both sides. And then simplifying now, I have 8x plus 2 equals 8. And then again, you just keep thinking, I need to get that x all by itself. Who's bothering it? The 8 and the 2, but we're going to subtract first. You almost do reverse order of operations. You know your order of operations that tells you to multiply and divide before you add and subtract? When you solve an equation, it's almost like you're going backwards. So you're gonna subtract the two first from both sides. And then you've got eight X equals six. Now I divide by whatever I'm trying to get rid of. In this case, it's an eight. And then we have finally X in its solitude equals 6 over 8, which reduces, and we have 3 fourths. Now, depending on your instructor, they may want you to always write your final solution in a solution set. Some are not so concerned. Either way, I'll show you both. So you could stop here, or if your teacher wants a solution set, then you put these little squiggly brackets, you put what x equals, your solution inside, and that's it. Good? Okay. Let's try another one, a little more involved. We have four times 2p minus quantity three minus p plus five equals negative seven p minus two. So first we gotta just clean this mess up. Call the cleanup crew and get inside those brackets cleaned up. I'm gonna still write the four out here. And then I'm gonna have 2p minus three plus p plus five equals negative 7p minus 2. Make sure you write down everything every step of the way. If you just try to clean up a little bit and then put it all back in, usually that's when students make mistakes. So I'm giving you this warning from having watched their errors. Okay, inside here, let's combine like terms. So we're going to have 3p plus 2. And then I have the 4 outside. I can switch to just regular parentheses now. Equals negative 7p minus 2 and then distribute, so this is 12p plus eight equals negative seven p minus two. And then again, we wanna get all the variables on one side and then divide by their coefficient. So I'm gonna add seven p. So what do we have now? 19p plus eight equals negative two. Subtract eight. I'm not going to write it on both sides. You can do it in your head. It's totally acceptable. So 19p equals negative 10. Divide by 19, p is negative 10 over 19. And nobody in the direction said give a decimal, round to two decimal places. So we don't. We leave our answers as simplified, completely reduced fractions. And you know, negative 10 over 19 may not be your favorite fraction, but it's the answer. It is what it is. Should you need to put it in a solution set, then you would just write it like so. All right? Okay, enough with linear equations. <laughs> Next, we're gonna focus on quadratic equations. So your goal with most quadratic equations is to set it equal to zero. So different idea than linear. Linear, we wanted the variable on one side, all the constants on the other. Quadratics, no, we want a zero on one side. Why is that? Well, from that point, we're going to either factor or do the quadratic formula. If the quadratic equation factors, then we use the zero factor or zero product property, which tells me if you have a times b equaling zero, assuming a and b are real numbers, then either a is zero or b is zero or both are zero. If 
it doesn't factor on the left-hand side, your quadratic equation, your quadratic expression, then you're going to use a quadratic formula. Here's the quadratic formula. You need to put it to memory. It never goes away. You'll use it a lot throughout the course. x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right. Now notice here the directions are a little different for these quadratic equations. It says solve. If the equations involve square roots, give both the exact solutions and the approximate solutions to three decimal places. So now they're being specific and they want exact plus punched into the calculator three decimal places we round. Okay, here we go. We have 2k squared minus k equals 10. First things first, set it to zero. So I'm going to move the 10 over. So we've got 2k squared minus k minus 10 is zero. Then now you're going to try to factor. Can you think of two numbers that multiply to 2 times negative 10, that's negative 20, that add up to negative 1? Good, it's negative 5 and 4, right? So then you can split that middle term and write it as 2k squared minus 5k plus 4k minus 10 is 0. Now that we have four terms, we factor by grouping. So we have k times 2k minus 5 plus I can take out a 2 and then again I have 2k minus 5, no surprise, equals 0. Here's my common factor. So I take out 2k minus 5 and I'm left with k plus 2. If you didn't watch the previous video that goes over factoring and you're like, what in the world is going on? I'll link it in the description as well. So now we can use the zero product property. This is basically A, this is B. If multiplying them by each other gives me zero, then either this is zero, this is zero, or both of them are zero. So from here you can just say, okay, 2k minus 5 is zero or k plus 2 is 0, which means k is 5 halves, or k is negative 2. So we have two solutions, which is typical in a quadratic equation. And then you can put them both in the solution set, separated by a comma, and the order doesn't matter that you put them in. Good, how was that one? Okay, let's look at another example. 3k squared minus 5x plus 1 equals 0. So let's see, can we factor this? Because it's already said equal to 0, so that's good. a times c, that's 3. b is negative 5. Can you think of two numbers that multiply to 3 but add up to negative 5 at the same time? I certainly can't, right? Because the only factors of 3 are 3 and 1. And no matter how you slice or dice it, that's never going to add up to negative 5. So we can't factor. What do we do? We don't cry. We're going to use the quadratic formula. So in this case, A would be 3, B is negative 5, and C is 1. So X equals opposite of B, which is going to make it positive 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Good, so this is 5 plus or minus square root. That's going to be 25 minus 12 over 6. And then we have 5 plus or minus square root 25 minus 12, that's 13 over 6. Now, this is considered your exact answer. Radical 13, that doesn't simplify, and then nothing else can be reduced. So if they ask you just for the exact answer and they didn't tell us to round, then we would stop. However, the directions also said to give it rounded to three decimal places. So you're gonna punch in your calculator twice. One time you're gonna do five plus rad 13 and then divide all of that by six. And then the second time you're gonna do five minus rad 13 and divide all of that by six. And then if you round to three decimal places, you should get 1.434 for the first one. And then for the second one, when you do 5 minus rad 13 divided by 6, you should get 0.232. Okay. Which one to put in the solution set? If they ask for both, put both. 
If they didn't say they wanted it rounded, then you would just by default give this exact answer here. This is exact because it's not been rounded or tampered with, right? Like if you only gave these two values and then someone came up to you and said, well, actually I, I changed my mind. I want it rounded to five decimal places and this is all you had, you'd be stuck. But here in this pure exact form, it's like you can round it to whatever you need. We have not tampered with the values. Okay, last kind of equation we're going to go over are equations with fractions, aka rational equations. And there's a whole process to this. I'm just going to summarize it briefly. You want to factor all the denominators first. Then from there, you're going to list restrictions on the variable. I'll explain what that is in just a minute. Then you multiply everything by the LCD. And guess what? Yep, I've got a whole separate video on this because this can be difficult if you haven't done it for a while. Okay. Now, let's look at this first example here. 5 over P minus 2 minus 7 over P plus 2 equals 12 over P squared minus 4. So first thing, I need to factor all the denominators. And almost everybody is. It's just P squared minus 4 is not factored. So p squared minus 4, that's a difference of squares. I'm going to factor it into p plus 2 and p minus 2. Now the next step is I have to list all the restrictions on the variable. Remember, we're not allowed to have zeros in denominators of fractions. That makes them undefined. So you want to restrict p in this case from taking on whatever value would make each of the denominators zero. So here I could see p should not equal 2. That would be problematic. p also should not equal negative 2. And again, same restrictions as over here. So I'm going to list that. That way at the very end, I don't accidentally report 2 or negative 2 as one of my solutions. Yeah. Okay, the next thing is we have to identify and multiply everything by the least common denominator. So in this case, the LCD, my least common denominator would be p minus 2 times p plus 2. So let's multiply everybody by that up top. If you need to remind yourself that this is over 1, go for it. Or just make sure you put it in the numerator. Not p plus 2, p minus 2 in the top and bottom, just in the top for the whole fraction. The goal of this step, multiplying by the LCD, is to be fraction free after. Okay, fraction free. So if in the next step after simplifying, you still have fractions, you still have denominators, something went wrong. So watch. P minus 2 cancels. All I have left now in that first term is 5 times P plus 2 minus. Now P plus 2 cancels here. So I have 7 times P minus 2. Very good. And then these guys all cancel out equals 12. Beautiful. Now look what a non-threatening equation this is with no fractions. I love it. So we distribute 5p plus 10 minus 7p plus 14 is 12. Combine like terms, negative 2p plus 24 is 12. So negative 2p is negative 12, which means p is 6. Was that one of my restrictions? No. So I can put it in the solution set and report it as my final answer. Isn't that fabulous? All right, one more. 2 over x squared minus 2x minus 3 plus 5 over x squared minus x minus 6 equals 1 over x squared plus 3x plus 2. So first thing we have to do, factor all the denominators. So 2 over, this is going to be x minus 3 times x plus 1. The next one's going to factor into x minus 3 times x plus 2. And then lastly, we have 1 over, very good, x plus 2 times x plus 1. Okay, let's list what the restrictions are on the variable. So x can't equal positive 3, negative 1, or negative 2. That's everything. 3, negative 1, negative 2. And then what's the LCD? 
it would be x minus 3, x plus 1, x plus 2. That's the common denominator. So you don't get a common denominator. You multiply everybody by the common denominator up top because our goal is to become, that's right, fraction free. Okay. Sometimes I just write LCD up top and do it in my head. You're more than welcome to. So x minus 3, x plus 1 cancels. All I have left is 2 times x plus 2 plus, who cancels here? All of this with x minus 3, x plus 2. So we've just got 5 and x plus 1. And then over here, this is all gone. This is gone. And I just have x minus 3. Beautiful. Now distribute and solve for the variable. So 2x plus 4 plus 5x plus 5 equals x minus 3. This is going to be 7x plus 9 equals x minus 3. So we have 6x equals negative 12, so x is negative 2. All right, good. Should we put it in the solution set? No, look, x can't equal negative 2. That was one of our restrictions. So what do we do? Well, we have no solution to report, and you just tell them that's what happened. Don't feel badly. There's no solution. Another way you could write no solution is this zero with a line through it. That means no solution. It stands for the empty set. Third option, you could draw an actual empty set with nothing inside it. Yes, that's legitimate notation. The one thing you cannot do is put the empty set inside a set. Now that set is non-empty, okay? So don't do that. That means something else. But here's your three options for no solution. Ask your instructor what they like though, okay? So that concludes the video. That was like rapid fire, especially with the rational equations. Like I said, I have many more videos. So if you are in the boat where you're like, I need more examples, I need more of a breakdown, I got you. But this is just supposed to be little overview right before you start your business calc content. So don't forget to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. You can follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Math with Professor V, and I'll be back sooner than later with the rest of your video lecture series.